Hi, this is Ennis from Never Stop Trucking. Today we're going to be talking about uh, maximizing your earnings as an owner operator. The first tip that I have for you as an owner operator that's leased on to someone or if you have your own company as well would be to know your cost per mile. Now you don't have to follow this uh, cost per mile blindly like I see a lot of YouTube videos uh, claiming that you should absolutely uh, follow that uh, formula at all times sometimes you can't it depends in which area you are sometimes you're going to be in a bad area you're going to end up there for uh, different reasons and uh, you want to get out so it will be hard to find a load that's going to be profitable like the other loads you were doing during that week so in that case you just want to get out and maybe look at the bigger picture at the end of the week uh, what you have made and how much your expenses were but generally it's uh, good to know the cost per mile the best thing to do is, that is uh, if you have been uh, driving for a while now let, let's say at least a year you should go back uh, to last year and uh, figure out how much your expenses were for the whole year now you have a uh, expenses that will uh, change and you will have some expenses that are fixed uh, for example uh, your truck payment is fixed your insurance is fixed uh, things like that some other things will be changing uh, like your maintenance and uh, maintenance we can also take an average so you can have a nice uh, idea about that but fuel for example will always change so at the end of the year uh, you know how many miles you drove, let's say you drove 100,000 miles for the last year, and uh, let's say you have a fixed uh, number of expenses. Now, everyone is different. It could be 50,000, it could be $100,000 in expenses. And then you will uh, divide one uh, by the other, and then that way you will have a rough idea of your expenses. You can always plan and say, hey, uh, this load is paying uh, $2,000 and it's 1,000 miles. And then you know how much roughly you will be making if you know what your cost per mile is. At the end of the week, what I usually like to do is uh, calculate all of those expenses and I will have figured out, for example, how much it costs me per week uh, for a truck payment, for fuel, for a trailer payment, for trailer rental, things like that. Uh, I will usually take into account last year and figure out how much money I was paying for maintenance for a week. So I would divide uh, the whole year by 52 weeks. And then this way I know uh, what roughly my... Uh, cost per week for maintenance is so i will have my fuel uh, my cost per week for uh, the payment for truck payment if i have a payment uh, and other things and you will pay always different amounts of tolls and some small expenses like uh, scales and then at the end of the week then you will be able to figure out uh, how much profit you had that week in my opinion it would be best if we could go um, a month uh, before this month or maybe even few weeks before this one because you never know what can uh, come up uh, uh, it's tough to figure out the, the weekly profit at the end of the week because sometimes you, there might be some expenses that you forgot or that will uh, show up later like um, missed tolls brokers not paying for a lo load or something like that uh, then you can go back and reflect. So in my opinion, let's say it, uh, it's uh, um, middle of October right now, maybe we should go one month back and then figure out, uh, sit down and then figure out for the whole month uh, ago to see how much our expenses w were. But for sure, you have to know your cost per mile. Uh, that's that's uh, really a, a must uh, because that way you will have uh, some negotiating power when it comes to brokers or if you're talking to your dispatcher and dispatcher is giving you a load that's not paying well, then you can kind of determine uh, just by knowing how many miles this load is and how much it is paying and then you will be able to see, hey, you know, I have to get out of this bad area. Well, at least this will cover my expenses and then the next load or the load that I brought here uh, was much more profitable. 
Uh, the next tip that I have is, of course, cho choosing high paying loads. Well, it doesn't have to be just high paying, let's just say uh, highly profitable loads, because sometimes loads will be paying a lot of money, but uh, there would be a lot of uh, uh, miles involved or there would be a few stops and you would maybe lose few days. So in that case, uh, maybe it doesn't make sense to go after high paying loads. Let's uh, talk about high, highly profitable uh, loads. So how do you do that? Well, you have to plan your trip, right? You have to plan where you're going to uh, go and how you're going to go out of there. And if you're going to be able to go out of there, sometimes people will just go empty uh, out of certain areas, maybe like Florida or Denver, Colorado, or the north northeast, so they would just go empty. But you have to plan on that. You, uh, in that case, you have to ha have a really high paying load to go there, and you're planning to go out empty. Now, if you can find uh, some a decent load from there, even better. But this way, you're planning ahead. Uh, some people would, will do these uh, triangles. Uh, for example, if we go here from e uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, if we go to East Coast, uh, we get uh, usually uh, decent money. But when we come back, the money is not there. It's, it's really bad. So some people would go south from uh, uh, the East to Carolinas or Georgia, and then from there come back uh, to Michigan. So do uh, this uh, uh, triangle. So that way you're always chewing higher choosing higher paying loads uh, than uh, what you were uh, actually doing before. So it has to do a lot uh, with the areas. Uh, sometimes you will end up in a bad area and uh, you will be waiting for a high paying load and that's probably not going to happen. You may lose a day or two or more just because you're waiting for that uh, high paying load. Right. So it's better just to go out and then uh, keep going because you're not making money. If the wheels are not turning, you're not making money. Some people will argue about this. Some people will say, hey, I'll, I would rather wait for a better load. Well, maybe if you're at home uh, and you're all set, like you, you don't have a truck payment, your expenses are not that big. So, yeah, I understand. But if you're uh, on the road and you need to make money, you need to drive then it's best to uh, get out of that bad, bad area and find a better paying load from a different location and then don't go to that bad area anymore. Now you learned your lesson and you're going to remember that. So you're not going to go there anymore. Another thing is fuel. Fuel is uh, probably one of the uh, biggest expenses that you will have out there. So your fuel, uh, your maintenance, your insurance, uh, that would be a lot of money, right? And then especially if you have a high payment on your truck uh, as well. Uh, but fuel uh, can really add up. So if you're an owner operator and you're driving this truck yourself, uh, you will be saving a lot of money if you slow down. Uh, you don't have to slow down to, you know, drive like 50 miles per hour, but just slow down. Speed limit is fine or just a little bit under the speed limit. It will help you a lot in the long run, uh, not idling and uh, using fuel cards that have uh, discounts and then actually using an app if they have one. And most fuel cards right now will have an app where you can uh, find where all the discounts are. Here in Usora Express, we use um, Fleet One with RTS discounts. And uh, I can see when I'm doing uh, payroll. I just did payroll actually this morning. And uh, one guy had uh, over $300 in savings. And uh, some of them will have $20, $100. It depends where you are. Uh, it depends if you are using that app. And depends if you are uh, going to the truck stops that actually have better discount. Some people will prefer Loves because Loves uh, truck stops are very clean and we all love them. But some uh, fuel carts will not have discounts at Loves or they will have um, very small discounts. You will be using a clean shower, you will be having a maybe better food, everything will be nicer, but you will not be saving money. So imagine if you're saving $100 every week, just $100 uh, for 52 weeks, that's uh, $5,000 a year that's a lot of money just on fuel savings so i would i would rather do that uh, instead of going to these fancy truck stops uh, sometimes you will have to go to like a little mom and pop uh, store with diesel island and they will have discounts so what just go get your uh, fuel there and then go to that truck stop 
that you like. The next thing that I have for you is uh, try to minimize downtime. That's all planning, right? We have some drivers here who really uh, give us open hands as far as planning. Uh, they will just go anywhere. They will say, just get me anywhere where there is money. And we would plan their trips. We would uh, get them there. And uh, if they have some special requirements, for example, some driver will not want to have heavy loads or something else, then uh, sometimes it would be harder uh, to find uh, these drivers a load. And then we would have to wait a little bit longer in the morning uh, for that good load to come out because we want to give them a load that's profitable for them and that they like, right? We're not going to push them to take something that they don't like. It used to be different when the markets uh, were better. We, we were able to pre-plan sometimes a whole week, right? Uh, but right now, that's really tough, as you know. If you're waiting anyway in the morning for your load, that might as well uh, find you a, a, a better load, right? But then uh, on the other hand, you don't want to wait till the afternoon because if you pick up in the afternoon, then you have to drive all night and you're going to lose your hours. Maybe you already started your clock in the morning, uh, so you will limit yourself. You will not be able to get to delivery uh, uh, in the morning and then you will be late every uh, day for the rest of the week right if you start late then every week uh, you will be late and late especially if you're driving a lot of miles so we want to minimize uh, the downtime uh, one thing is because you know if you are sitting you're not making money also you're idling and uh, your, your truck will use a lot of fuel. We have to minimize downtime. We have some drivers that will call us uh, all day, say, hey, you know, is there a load for tomorrow? If you have a dispatcher and you tell the dispatcher, I uh, want to go to these areas. I don't want that kind of load. This is what I like, right? Now your dispatcher wants to honor that and the dispatcher will look for that kind of load. And there may be loads out there that you may have liked but you kind of uh, told them not to, to look at those loads. So sometimes if you call a dispatcher and say, hey, okay, well, there are no loads to go to that area. But is there a, something else, something similar? Uh, maybe there is uh, something that goes to a neighboring state. Uh, you know, you maybe there is uh, something that's picking up uh, more than 100 miles away, something that's better paying. It could be anything. But if you talk to them, and they tell you, hey, okay, so I'm going to widen the, the radius. I'm going to widen the search for, for more. I'm going to include more states, something. Or, or even uh, if we have uh, all the states listed that you like, there might be a load that we thought you didn't like. And then we, you would ask the dispatcher, hey, okay, well, which loads do you see, right? Okay, I see this, this load, that load, this load. And then you may give them like five loads or more. And then they will be able, the uh, owner operator will be able to see, okay, there is nothing else, nothing else is coming. So there are these five to 10 loads that I could choose from. I will choose the one that I like the most, right? So sometimes that will work, right? And then same thing if you're a dispatcher, if you cannot find a load and there is really nothing, you can call the driver and tell them, hey, I don't see anything. And I do that all the time, but I see these, these load, that load and that load. And then... A lot of times they will say, okay, well, can you try to get me that one, ask for more money, but yeah, let's, let's just do that load. Another thing that I have for you is uh, avoid empty mouths. Empty mouths are okay. When we um, call our drivers and offer them a load, we would always include the empty mouths. For example, uh, a load goes from um, Grand Rapids, Michigan to uh, Buffalo, New York. It's 500 miles from here to there. But uh, if we go to pick up uh, in Muskegon, which is around 45 miles from here, so that will add 45 miles in, in uh, other direction and then another 45 miles uh, to come back here. So that load uh, now is uh, 600 miles. So we would include all of those miles in our calculations, you know, what the rate per mile is, and we would present it to the driver and tell them, okay, this load is 600 miles and it's paying that much. All right, does this work for you? And then they would usually say, hey, you know, can you ask for more? And then we try to negotiate. Empty miles are really uh, killing you, not just like sometimes you, you will be able to pick up a load and, and justify those empty miles because essentially you're paid for those if you calculate everything together. Uh, but, you know, for a fact, you will be using uh, more fuel, you will be using more time 
and therefore and it's harder on the truck and there is a bigger chance that something is going to happen uh, there's a chance that the load might get cancelled by the time you get there and then you drove um, you know 100 miles uh, empty because of that good rate but uh, uh, now the load is cancelled and they you know barely even give you 150 dollars uh, for the truck order not used so so in that case that might not work for you so it's best uh, all in all to uh, avoid uh, empty miles uh, when I look for loads, and you noticed me in my uh, videos about the uh, in the life of a dispatcher, I would uh, a lot of times sort the loads by uh, deadhead. Uh, so if I see that a load is picking up uh, 10 miles away and it's a light load, uh, the driver is more likely to take that load because it's right there close to them. If you avoid empty miles as much as you can, you will be able to save some money and time calculate how many loaded miles you had and how many empty miles you had and empty miles will add up a lot let's say you had 500 uh, empty miles at the end of the month what if you cut it down uh, in half and the last thing here uh, but not the least is the preventative maintenance uh, maintenance is really crucial i see a lot of drivers uh, especially owner operators if they're down, they're sitting, waiting for a load or getting loaded, they would go out and look around their truck, open up the hood, go under the truck and just look, right? You don't have to do anything. Uh, most of the times you, you will not uh, have to do anything, but you will look, you will spot anything that's out of ordinary. You will maybe see a screw in your tire. Uh, you will take a look at your brakes. Well, hey, my brakes, uh, you know, they will have to be replaced soon. And you have more time to shop around. Same with the tires. Uh, open up the hood. Uh, maybe something is disconnected or something is about to break. And then you can quickly fix it. Uh, and and uh, plan on, on stopping by somewhere where uh, they can fix it if you don't have the tools or the knowledge to do that. Uh, so uh, rather than a uh, truck breaking down on the road while you're driving, you had no idea that this was going to happen. This way you can uh, plan for it. You can save yourself so much trouble and so much money by just looking and going around the truck, opening up the hood and just looking. At least you're going to have peace of mind. Like when you go into the truck, you're loaded, you're taking off, you will uh, have peace of mind knowing that everything is fine on your truck. You don't have to worry about anything like, I wonder what my tires look like. Uh, I wonder if there is a leak, uh, if there is enough coolant, if there is enough uh, engine oil. Uh, this way, you know, and, and you are prepared uh, for anything and nothing can surprise you. This is Ennis from Never Stop Trucking. Hopefully this uh, helped you. If you are interested in uh, leasing to uh, Usora Express, there is a link in the description of this video. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you around.